Bulo Vinaka, everyone, uh, and welcome along to our Digital Pacific Live session. Uh, it's great to have a number of you joining us in the Zoom Live session, um, and there'll be a few more coming in, I'm sure, uh, and also joining us on Facebook Live. Um, my name is Tim Kong, uh, and I'm the Program Manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum uh, Pilot, uh, and I'm the host and interviewer today. Um, and it's my absolute privilege to have um, two uh, excellent and wonderful authorities on um, Fiji and also being of Fiji uh, to join us in our session today. So um, uh, I'll ask them to introduce themselves uh, as we go around the Zoom. So uh, Dr. Teresi. team uh, and your amazing team in uh, uh, Wellington, as well as uh, our team in uh, Australia for organizing this uh, very special event, a digital uh, event. Naedangu or Tarisi Wulindilo or Maramani Kandam. Nanungu Koro Natokalau, Letikino Yawe, Nanungu Korenivasu or Nukunuku, and Letikina or Tabuki. Rona nungu tumbu tumbu, ro turanga marama ni kandamu, ena deva kei viti. Vavini vina kavaka lewe na nungu sureti mene signi kua, miumwe vaka itavi ena vital notaki ni vei yau eramaruitu, ena vei vale ni yau makawa, vaka telenga kine sona, vei vale ni vola, kora maruitu kine vola, ena rona matintungo me ni Islandi ke Australia. Ena vuno da vanga ni varong tuk mekina o vambole tuk ani kibi kimuni. So to translate that for our non-Fijian speakers, um, I just introduce myself that I'm from the most beautiful island in uh, Fiji, uh, Kandavu. Uh, my dad is from the village of Natokalau in the district of Yawe, and my mother is also from Kandavu, uh, from the beautiful village of Nukunuku uh, in the uh, district of the Wuki. So I'm just so grateful to be here and to be invited to be part of this Talano session, uh, you know, in commemoration of the Fijian Language Week, uh, and also to connect to museums and libraries and archives in the two countries of Australia and New Zealand. Uh, uh, Dr. T, uh, and yes, on a personal note, it's a huge privilege um, to have you, have you here joining our, uh, our Talano today. Uh, Dr. Robinson, if I ask you to introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. Oh, thank you so much, Tim. And uh, yeah, thank you again, uh, just echoing uh, Dr. T's um, words and saying that it's a real privilege to be here speaking um, with everyone and, and sharing some interesting information, I hope. Um, my, uh, I work at the National Library of Australia and um, uh, have uh, particularly passionate, I guess, about this, this, this topic today because uh, I have um, Fijian heritage myself. My mum, uh, her first language is Fijian. Um, she was uh, born in uh, Bekindrobi uh, province and uh, migrated to Australia in the 1970s. Um, so it's a special week, I guess, being Fiji Language Week. And uh, it's a really wonderful opportunity to, to be here with Dr. T and to um, you know, share in her knowledge and her wisdom about some of the material that the National Library holds. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Uh, and Tabatu, I'll get you to introduce yourself and uh, your role today. Nisa Bula Vinaka, Nia Thango Kuo Tabatu Kura Raia, Oya La Neva Ni Cook Islands. Nisa Bula Vinaka, everybody, my name is Tabatu Kura Raia, and I am the uh, engagement manager for the Pacific Virtual Museum project. So my role for this job is to connect with museums, galleries, libraries around the world and get them to share their Pacific digital content. Um, but today I'll be helping out Tim to host and also relay some of the questions that you might have um, to our panelists. Vinaka. Vinaka uh, Tabatu. Um, and yes, kia ora and Anissa Mbulu to everyone watching again. Um, my, as I said, my name is Tim and my role is the um, program manager of the Pacific Virtual Museum Pilot uh, in the website digitalpacific.org. Um, I am uh, of Fiji in that my father uh, is was born in the island of Kandavu uh, from the province of Yahweh in the village of Nalotu, which is behind me in my virtual screen. Um, 
it is a beautiful photo, but just because of how I have to sit, it looks like there's a small rainbow coming out of my head. So I apologize for that. Um, but um, he, uh, like Dr. Robinson, uh, he, uh, Dr. Robinson's mother emigrated to um, Aotearoa in the 1970s and met my mother uh, here. Uh, and um, so, yeah, like many um, Fijian uh, born in Aotearoa, uh, I am somewhat disconnected, but also um, learning uh, to reconnect with my culture and my heritage uh, and our way of being. Obviously, we support the um, Fiji Sevens every time they turn out, and that's a very successful support um, uh, routine and lots of celebration there. Um, but it's a real privilege with this project to be able to uh, see and connect, um, which is um, with not just Fijian uh, or co cultural items of Fiji, but also from across uh, Melanesia, Polynesia and Micronesia. Uh, and our focus today is on Fiji uh, culture, cultural heritage, um, and it's going to be in two parts. Uh, in our first part, we will be, uh, Dr. Robinson will be sharing um, a project that the National Library of Australia is um, currently running and working through, and she'll be sharing uh, and speaking to some of the uh, digitized cultural items that the National Library of Australia holds uh, and are also accessible to um, not just people in Australia, but people anywhere who can get online and get access to the internet. Uh, and then Dr. Teresi is going to, um, we've chosen a number of uh, images from that the National Library of Australia to, to share. And Dr. Teresi is just going to share some of her knowledge and understanding um, of them. Um, in the way of a Talanoa, it's not just between us, uh, but also yourselves. So if you are joining us either in the Zoom Live or in Facebook Live, um, please do uh, use the chat um, function in the rooms to uh, type your messages in. Uh, Tapatu will be picking those up um, and um, potentially, uh, depending on our time, we might have some opportunity to take some audio questions as well. Um, we will weave the questions in um, through the through the presentations. Um, so just post them and um, Tapatu, either Tapatu or myself will look for the places that we can put them in front of our presenters today. Um, so with all that said, I'm going to change my view so that you can focus on the speaker. Uh, and I'm also going to share my screen to share our um, web pages here. Just find the right one. There we go. And I'm going to start with this window here. Uh, and I will ask Dr. Sherlene to uh, introduce this project that uh, uh, the NLA National Library of Australia is hosting. Thank you. Uh, great. Thanks so much, Tim. So um, as you can see, uh, at the moment, the National Library is uh, uh, taking a project to uh, make sure that the histories of uh, Fiji-born migrants are recorded as part of the National Library's collection. And that's a really uh, important part of what the library does, that it does reflect the diversity of people who've um, come to Australia and made their homes from many different places. And um, I think that it is worth emphasising that the histories and the contributions of um, Fiji-born migrants are really quite substantial uh, in Australia, uh, many fields, sports, music, uh, academia, and many other areas as well. So as part of this project, we're reaching out to Fijian communities across Australia uh, to encourage them to add their oral histories, pictures and manuscripts, and published material to the national collection. And if we scroll down a little bit, um, or have a bit of a look, you can see that we do actually have some material that we have collected in the past that does reflect Fijian culture in Australia. Um, I think we're now going to a, quite an interesting item. So you've got the tambua, uh, which is uh, up on the screen sort of at the moment. Uh, I think Tim, there you go. Thank you. That's great. Um, this, this, I, I think this is a really beautiful object and um, very special uh, item in the library's collection. And it has an interesting story behind it as well, because um, the, the Australian Prime Minister, Harold Holt, uh, went missing uh, in the 1960s, 1967, I think. And um, uh, when that happened and Australia lost their prime minister in this way, the Fijian people gave uh, Australia this as a gift. So uh, I think it's a really beautiful thing that we were given and um, it's something that does hold a, a special place in the library's collection. And, I, and we've probably got, if we go back, um, some other fantastic photographs. Um, these, are, these are part of a, a series that were taken uh, in the 1970s 
And um, what I like about them, I guess, is that uh, there were this was at the start of a major migration wave of people from Fiji to Australia. Um, so my mother, as I said before, was one of those people who came over in that particular time period. And um, so you can see these photos of, I guess, a Fijian culture being expressed in Australia. So if we go maybe up a little bit and um, have a look at some of the ones that we've got there, um, you can see that there is a, um, I like this one of the carver bowl that's, um, and also the national costume. So I think these were in South Australia uh, in 1972. So that's that's pretty early after um, Fijian independence that you can see um, these striking images um, expressed and, and taken, the, the beautiful photo there. Um, so I, I really like this one, it's one of my favourites. But we have other items as well and I think we're about to pull up another one. Uh, yeah, this is actually one of another, I keep saying I have favourites, but it just shows the richness of some of our holdings. That This, uh, this recording here, um, which was done in 1960, um, 1965, I think, is um, Randiki and Gary, Gary Tambua, and it is uh, the Songs of Fiji. So uh, Randiki and his wife, Ita, um, came to Australia in the 1960s, where he was um, studying librarianship, actually, uh, in Canberra. And they used to play at a lot of um, parties and um, gatherings, uh, Fijian songs and folk music. And uh, so the library actually has this recording you can hear of them performing together. And I think uh, some of it's in language, which is really beautiful. Gives you a bit of a taste of, of that recording and you can one of the great things about the national library's way of delivering material um, and a, a great way we can kind of um, work together is that you can um, uh, with digital pacific is that you can uh, access material um, online in this kind of way so wherever you might be you can uh, listen to Ren, uh, randiki anita's beautiful songs and we've got another recording that I think we're going to go to. Um, so this is uh, the uh, Ratu Sakamasesi Mara, who is a, um, was the really the, found, the founding father, I guess, of uh, modern Fiji. And this is a speech that he gave at the press club in 1979. So you can hear his voice as well in this recording. I think he'll be introduced first. Members of the National Press Club and their guests, our guest today is we have to go a bit Mara, the Propsy Charity Tournament, <laughs> where he had. If we do, you can see how we regard it at the outset, why it came into being, and what we hope from it. I think it's generally known that the forum sprang from a feeling of frustration with the South Pacific Commission and the South Pacific Conference. So it's just a little taster, I guess, of, uh, of, of, of a beautiful um, piece of audio that we hold of such a pivotal person speaking. So it gives you a little bit of a hint at some of the treasures um, that we have in the oral history collection, which is actually um, over 55,000 hours of recordings and uh, other, other um, people from Fiji background in the collection as well. And this is another uh, recording that we hold that you can access um, uh, in this way, which is also, um, interesting because of the memories that this person has go back quite a way to actually the start of the 20th century. So you can listen to somebody describing um, in their own words what Fiji was like at that particular time. So I think that that's um, quite special as well. So it's lots of fun to explore and listen to things and you can sort of see that there's um, little headings that give you an idea of what's being talked about as well with this recording. That's amazing, uh, Chilean. I hadn't realised because we were prepping for this, I hadn't realized how much that is. It's over two hours of uh, uh, of oral history, which is incredible um, to sit and listen, um, broken down into what looks like between five and 10 minute sections. So yeah, really nice and, and easy to explore. So thank you. Oh, no, that's all right. It's um, it, it's a great, great system that you can kind of dip into and, um, and yeah, really get to to hear there's something very special I think about hearing someone in their own words so you know you can uh, read things and and um and connect in other ways but when you hear somebody's voice that's a special kind of way of connecting with things I think 
fantastic. And um, you're saying this, I'll jump back to the page here, but this um, project is an active one or you're looking for contributions, is that right? And yeah, I think um, uh, it, it's it's a project that um, is, is underway and it has a number of different elements to it. So, you know, we, we know that we have a, a collection that we're really proud of that does hold um, some really interesting pieces of material. Um, such as our really old oral histories that we talked about and the, the recording from the 1960s and the Tambua. Um, but we want to build on that and we want to make sure that we keep reflecting um, the culture of uh, Fiji born people in Australia. So as we go forward over the next year or so, we want to do a number of things. We would like to do oral history interviews. So we actually have an expression of interest form that if people are interested, they we might just have a bit of a look at that. There we go. If people are interested in taking part in that, they can um, put forward their details here on this form. Um, so, you know, we'd really welcome people that might like to share their story of, of coming to Australia from Fiji um, so that we can record that for future generations. And, um, you know, ha having, having um, my grandmother, for example, is somebody who migrated to um, Australia from Fiji, I guess, at, a, at, a, at an older age. Um, and, uh, you know, knowing that she's not, she's somebody that would communicate largely through, um, through passing down stories and through that verbal way of communication. So I think there's a really interesting opportunity here to make sure that the material is uh, recorded and preserved in that particular way. And so the oral history uh, project is a really exciting one. And I think we would like to um, encourage people from wherever you might be in Australia to put forward their, their names and their details on this form so that we can, um, can know that they're interested in taking part. And you can just there, there's there's a bit of the information that um, that we ask of people, so where you might be based, because we, we will go everywhere um, as part of our National Library of Australia. We do travel all over the country, um, our interviewers. So um, we'd be really welcoming those, and and from different age groups and backgrounds and so on. So um, you know that could be somebody in their twenties through to somebody who might be in you know I think potentially we've interviewed people who are in their 90s so it certainly is possible and I'm sure we would have people who were interviewed uh, maybe even in their late 90s uh, in our collection in fact we actually have a project on uh, people who could remember who had been alive for 100 years so so there's no limit <laughs> on what we can do oh very good um my great-grandmother I think lived she was 100 plus we couldn't quite figure because the uh, birth certificates in Fiji were a bit uh, um she always well it was passed down to me she could remember uh, many different things from then but yeah she was still running around or well, not running around she was still on the reef when she was 100 so um oh, lots wow. of good uh dalo and taro there eating in in, in the lotu oh. um thank you very much uh Shirlene, for all of that um were there any questions taps nothing coming through yet um i'm not sure if there's any on facebook live or anything no questions coming through yet so get your questions through guys if you want to Ask Dr. Shirley anything about the project. Um, can I just make one one other co a quick comment that might be useful to people as well? That if people um, would like to know more or they're interested in taking part, as well as connecting through uh, online, they can also email us at um, select at nla.gov.au. Um, so that's again just if you're interested in oral histories or if you are interested in, um, if you're a publisher or you produce maybe a newsletter of your Fijian community group, you can uh, deposit those things with the National Library. We'll be commissioning photographs of um, cultural events. Uh, so, you know, Fiji Day is obviously just around the corner, so this is a great time to be talking. Um, but we, we want to um, uh, make sure that people reach out to us if, if they're interested in knowing more, because there are different ways you can be involved and a number of different things that we're collecting, because we collect uh, many things at the National Library that go beyond um, beyond books. Um, fantastic. Thank you for the email there, Di. Um, this one question in here um, is um, sort of in two parts, I suppose. Uh, I was just wondering if participants will be remunerated for their contributions. Uh, and that might not be fan financially, but um, could there be learning opportunities for the community in terms of I suppose that real relational connection between, you know, Fijian, um, uh, either Australian born Fijians or Fijian, uh, uh, who, Fijians have emigrated to Australia in terms of this conversation. Yeah, I think that um, uh, definitely one of the ways that we kind of like to, uh, I guess, give people something for participating in the project is by 
um, giving them everyone gets a complimentary copy of, of their recording. So if you do an interview, you'll get this very um, professionally recorded uh, copy of the interview. And I know that's very meaningful for people who do the interview, but I think it's also even more meaningful for people who um, have their family members do that. So, you know, there's people who have their grandparents or, or great grandparents even who have done oral histories and can listen to that. And that is a really beautiful and moving thing uh, in the years to come. So I think that's the true the true gift or legacy, I guess, is in what it leaves for future generations. Um, and knowing that it, when you do this with the National Library, it's something that will last and be looked after um, in, in a way that is very special um, for the future. So, you know, we have recordings that go back to the 1950s and they are beautifully looked after and they'll endure into the future. Excellent. Thank you, Shirlene. Um, there's been one query here around uh, the definition of Fijian uh, and um, why on Australia it's used as the generic tag as Fijian um, and I appreciate that in, in Fiji itself as well as in Australia and Aotearoa it's being debated um, but could you give us any background about the definition of Fiji uh, or Fijian as you've used it in this project? Yeah and I, I guess just noting that we definitely recognize the diversity of people who live in Fiji um, that uh, we, uh, as a national library, we have a, um, a government definition that we use, which is the, the government definition that's used by the Fijian government. But we do recognise that um, there are many different cultures and experiences and backgrounds that fall under that umbrella and that we do want to make sure that we respect and recognise uh, that diversity of Fiji. And that um, we're really, I guess, interested in the experiences of all Fiji-born people who have migrated to Australia. So that's what we're looking at. But as, as you say, Tim, um, certainly acknowledging that there are um, feelings about that and that um, our, our job is to, to talk about that experience of um, Fijians uh, and people from Fiji who have migrated to Australia and the way that they have enriched and contributed to the, the culture here. And um, that's predominantly our focus is on migration and what has happened to people um, in Australia as well as their backgrounds in Fiji. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Shirlene. Um, we might, uh, as we push on here, looking at the time because it's always rushing on, uh, we might switch across now um, and we've put a few links there into the Zoom uh, live chat and also um, um, I might get my colleague Ulu to put some of those links into um, uh, into the Facebook chat as well for people who are watching us on Facebook Live. Um, we might move now to uh, exploring um, a few more of the records um, with Dr. Trisi. Uh, so I'll just sorry, excuse me here. I'll just do the changing of the changing of the focus with the video camera <laughs> so that we put the spotlight on Dr. Teresi uh, as she's our speaker here. Um, and what we've um, done in terms of preparing for this is we've used uh, Digital Pacific uh, to find a number of items that are held at National Library in terms of shining a light on National Library of Australia and their collections. Um, for those of you that haven't used Digital Pacific, um, we um, basically highlight the, the metadata and content that is held by institutions and communities all across the world. Uh, and we, um, on our site, we show um, the basic uh, titles, descriptions, dates, locations, what we call metadata, uh, the small bits of information around the actual object or the actual record. Um, but we don't hold the source material. Uh, and so the point of our site is that you're able to find things uh, quickly, that we, we seek to make them visible and accessible. Um, and so when you see a record or an item or an image or an object on our, on our site, we actually want you to click it and get to the source provider. So today our focus is on the content of the National Library of Australia. Uh, and we're just gonna walk through a number of photos uh, and um, Dr. Teresi is going to share some of her knowledge and thoughts with us. Again, if you have questions or comments as we go through this, please do ask them in the chat and we'll weave those questions into the conversation too. So um, yeah, we'll start with this one. And in the way of being prepared for everything, we actually preloaded all of these images just in case something broke. So hopefully it won't. Uh, and Dr. Teresi, I'll, I'll hand to you now as we look at this first photo. Um, yeah, when I look at this, I think uh, I see the carver bowl that my uh, 
family often sit around when we're back visiting Nalotu there. Um, but I also noticed there's an awful lot of tambua here, uh, and obviously the kava bowl is empty. So, <laughs> um, do you would you have any insight, Doctor T, as to and also what these implements are here are on the on the in front of the tanua? Yes, uh, for um, yeah, sharing these these images, these photos, and I know uh, you know that they were um, taken for a particular purpose, and it's really nice to see a lot of the tambua eh? um, there uh, being held by that uh, gentleman. Um, and uh, I think in terms of the artifacts that are in the front of the tanoa, um, it looks like they are the matauvatu or the stone edges, if I can see the angle, it looks like it's lined up based on size because the matau, um, the, the edges, they come in different sizes. So you have the small and the medium and the large. And um, I've uh, been blessed to have seen some of the, the real use of the, uh, the matau batu in Kambara. In 2006, I was fortunate to be part of the Australian National University, um, archaeology team led by Professor um, Jeff Clark, Jeffrey Clark, and we spent about a month or about maybe five weeks on the island of Kambara, uh, particularly the village of Nekeleanga. So, if anyone from Nekeleanga and Kambara are listening in today, Bulavinak um, Malo and Bula, uh, we were very fortunate that there were a number of elders. I'm sure they must have passed on now. Uh, that we interviewed and also took photos of. And there was one gentleman who had his own um, um, shed that he used to make the tano. He actually was making uh, the tano from the Vesi uh, trees that were behind the village or above the village, I should say. And she was, he was still using the, the matau, uh, matau vatu. So it was so, uh, I still remember that moment um, as if it was like yesterday. I walked up to him and sat next to him, and he was explaining, you know, how um, the different edges, the blades, were used for different purposes. So the larger the edge is, is going to be, the the more heavy or large the activity is going to be. Basically, you know, the cutting of the of the tree. But as you come in into the finer details of the building or the finishing of the tanoa. Uh, itself, because he was actually making a tarno. I, I love this picture because it reminded me of him. And um, he was using the smaller ones uh, as well so for, for finer, you know, um, the grain, eh? the finer grain of yeah. the tarno. So, um, yeah, I just uh, have those, mem those memories just came back to me when I saw this picture, particularly the, the tarno sitting there and the yamini um, matau and matau watu sitting right there. And of course, those tambua that was held by this gentleman, I always wish they always, uh, you know, record their names. It's always been one of the challenges I face working in museums. And I'm sure the libraries and the archives, they also face the same issue where, you know, the pictures were taken, um, but then they never mentioned the name of the person in the picture. Maybe it's something that we can all learn for future collecting, you know, for even in, it doesn't take even 10 seconds to ask for the person's name. Um, but anyway, this was taken in 1920 and, you know, we cannot go back in time, but it's just lovely uh, to see here. Um, and so by looking at the picture again, if I can comment him on the, yeah. on the tambua and the masi at the back. Oh, yeah. So I'll go, oh, zoom, I'll zoom go back on the tambua very quickly, just uh, different sizes as well, because of mm. course we know that the, uh, whale's tooth, the sizes change. And also I wish if it was in color, but I can visualize some of the colors from here, even though it's black and white, but I can see that some have like darker shades, uh, mm. even the one right in the front. So mm. the tambuas also have different categories. Um, some when they are kind of reddish in color or tambuan damu, uh, or some that were um, immersed in, you know, coconut oil and turmeric, that's again, you know, another um, category. And the, the higher, I think by looking at the different colors and the sizes, that sort of shows the importance, you know, and the purposes or who owned it. 
uh, mm. as well as what purpose it was used for. Yeah. Fantastic. Would would this have been uh, owned by? Would all of these been owned by this individual in the photo? Do you think, or would they been owned by? Yeah, I th I think it must or? have been part of a presentation because normally in a Fijian setting. Um, you know, brothers or our grandfathers, they contribute. So remember in the uh, Wakabiti way of doing things, we do the Sole Sole Vaki. Yeah, mm, so Sole mm. Sole Vaki is the paramount way of gathering together. So you will have sort of five brothers who will have one tambo each. Yeah, so you yeah, have yeah. five <laughs> and then you go to the Valley song, there will be others. But one thing I want to share to Tim that it looks like if it was done as a presentation, they normally present it in tens. Okay. Mm, so 10 is our magic number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we call it, we have our own indigenous county. So mm. we call Tinina uh, Tambua Sandona Vulo. Tinina Tambua Sandona Vulo. So when they're doing their presentations, so the question that has come through in terms of the purposes, the use of tambua is used for everything from birth till death, mm -hmm. yeah? So tambua is used in all facets of our lives. And even for, I mean, if I can share too, even before a child is born, so maybe I should say not even birth, pre-birth, <laughs> if yeah, I yeah. can say that. Because before a child is born, someone has asked for the name to be given you know, so they usually uh, give a tambua to the parents of the baby to be born to request for the name. See, so they mm -hmm. even have a tambua that is used for that purposes as well. So maybe I have to correct myself there. It could be a pre and even during when the baby is born and then all the way until they pass away, the tambua is always exchanged. So the tambua is a form of currency for us in Fiji. Yeah, and and as Dr. Sherlin said, you know the the tambour that was gifted to the Australian government in at the death of um, Harold Holt was obviously a recognition on uh, a currency and honouring a gift to them to that as people of Australia. Um, excellent, thank you. Uh, well, we'll move on to our next one. I don't think there's yeah no more probably no more questions. So this one is another photo taken nineteen uh, hundreds nineteen twenty. Um, by E.W. Searle, I think it might be the same photographer. Um, mm. But this one here, the title is Two Men Playing Wooden Drums Watched by Two Young Boys. <laughs> uh, and it's a big drum. <laughs> so could you tell us any more about, I can zoom in a wee bit here. Yes. About... Beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting distracted here by the hair of these two men. That's what I was just about to say this fellas <laughs> it's from a, a Drake video or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Looks like they must have had a uh, you know a dyeing or uh, some sort mm. of a special because we we have our traditional dye. Uh, so it looks like it's bleached, this guy yeah. here. So wonderful. Um yeah, so this is the Lali. Um for those of us who are from Fiji, we know that we have different types of lalis. We have lali ni meke, and then we have different lalis for different purposes. But of course, the uh, use of the vesi tree, because the same one that is used for the tanoa, they normally you know, use it for the lali, but there are other hardwoods as well. So the vosabakaviti is, um, um, you know, we have the, you know, with the wood, eh? so there's the iron wood, hardwood, and then the softwood. So whichever one that you uh, have access to, um, then you can use it for this particular purpose. So this is a really large uh, lali. Um, and of course, you've got the uwa uwa. We call it uwa uwa. Uwa uwa are the beaters, uwa uwa ni lali. And sometimes in some cases in villages, uh, you know, there's some pigeons listening it too that are going down memory lane. But look, there can be actually two people beating the lali at the same time. And, uh, you know, but they will be into what do you call, they'll be kind of uh, using some sort of um, a musical, um, yeah, how can I say it? Come on, come on, say it. <laughs> say it in Fijian. The, the note, yeah, musical note. So yeah. when someone is beating like the, 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 yeah, and the next person is going to be coming in between. Uh, and then the combination, it's really beautiful. Um, and again, if I can say too, that the lali beats the sounds, um, they have meanings. Uh, mm. There's a kind of a, 
Um, there was a paper that was written in terms of, uh, you know, decoding a lot of the lali bits, because back in the day when a chief dies, there's a certain bit that is uh, um, used, um, which they kind of say that it's the, yeah, the tangi tangi ni benua, uh, when someone uh, passes away, or especially if the Turanga uh, passes away, then the beating of the lali is the, the tears of all the people. And so mm -hmm. there's going to be definitely no sound, you know, in the village. So everyone has to be quiet and, you know, to give that um, respect. Uh, so the lali is the only sound that is yeah. given. So I think the Fiji Museum has some recordings of the different types of lali beats and the meanings. Yeah. Um, two two questions. One uh, first from uh, Suliana is: uh, Does this size of lali still exist today? Uh, obviously, this picture was taken in the nineteen twenties. Would many of these be remaining in villages or in? Um, I yeah, I've been to some villages around uh, Fiji. It's kind of very few and far between. There's not many of these sizes, if I can mm. say. Um, I think in Lao there were quite a few uh, that I saw that were still in existence, but in other villages um, on the main island, um, we hardly see the large ones like this. Mm. Mm -hmm. I do, I do remember, um, uh, and I was actually just watching some videos um, for posting on our social media that were actually from Coconut, but they were using the 45 gallon drum. And I think it was mainly the kids, but it was the same kind of beats. So, you know, times move on. Um, yes. Yeah. And a couple of comments here. Yeah, I've seen a couple on Bao and, and uh, one from Meli. Oh, Bula Meli. Um, Bula Meli. <laughs> uh, it just said the churches have a large one, so that they're pretty rare. Uh, these days mm. and i think i think you said the name of the tree dr Trisi, that it's made yeah, from we, these ones that's right yeah so the vesi the vesi tree is a kind of the highly priced uh wood that is used but because we have to remember too that lalis were also gifted mm. Mm. Okay. It, it was it was an item that that was gifted so if they're going to be making some to you know like an exchange between a chief and another chief then definitely the large ones and the highly priced ones so anything that is made of vesi you know is really highly priced and of course you know the bigger the sizes would mean that the access to the large vesi trees mm. yeah um but then in other places as sizes comes down as i was saying earlier it depends on what other trees that they have access to yeah Oh, thank you. Thank you. So hopefully, Suliana, that speaks to your query about the rare size <laughs> mm. uh, of the of the trees and the Vesi trees. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I just had a thought. Uh, Ellis Bethy uh, corrected me, which is good because I called it the drum because it's listed as a drum, but it's a lally. Um, is, yeah. um, and I'm not sure if, uh, Shirlene, you can answer this. If in terms of the metadata, which is on the page here, which says two men playing wooden drums, um, what is the capacity for National Library to um, potentially update and acknowledge, well, to do two things, I think. One, update and, and, and use the word lali, uh, or also um, um, uh, acknowledge that it, it was referenced as a drum <laughs> for, for, for a certain time. Um, because I think there's an interesting, and, and we have this a little bit with our project, is we can't, uh, we uh, only show metadata from content partners um, and we recognize that the work that um, you know acquisitions and description do in libraries and archives is is ongoing and challenging so is there any opportunity for this to be referenced as a lali as opposed to the drum yeah um i think there would be i'm pretty uh, i'm pretty sure that our descriptive team um, at the library would welcome that and should be able to update that so i can certainly pass that on to them and make it um yeah uh, i think libby's actually just uh, provided uh ways that people can send that through to us so that we can um pass that on to description and get them to have a look at that oh, excellent thank you libby uh, and thank you shalene we well, just got another question from facebook oh, yeah. um is it only men, men that can beat the lali or can women beat it as well Dr. T. Uh... Okay, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, so from my own experience of growing up in Fiji, it's usually just the men 
uh, it's kind of like uh, even young boys uh, when Christianity came into Fiji, uh, you know, they can they're the ones tasked to beat the lali uh, for for you know for the church. But I know recently I've noticed um, you know sometimes girls, young girls, uh, accompanying the older boys usually just for support. But I've seen them around the you know the lali area. But I'm sure back in the day, you know, in the olden days, uh, it was really very much. Uh, um, you know, um, a man's uh, task to do. However, if I can say an, a however here, here, when it comes to meke, uh, some meke, like the, the dancing, because we have the smaller lali for meke. Uh, I remember because uh, I went to Andiva Kumbau school in Sawani, um, and because it was a girl's school, we have uh, a young girl, I think she's from Telebu, if I can remember, Rosalini Naisoro. She was an amazing drummer, you know. She was uh, doing, and because remember, with the drumming, when we're doing the meke, there's different, um, you know, uh, uh, what do you call? What's the right word? Tempo, right? There's some fast and uh, slow, all of that. She's so good, um, and uh, you know, she can just look around and you know, not even looking at the lali, and she's she knows the beat off by heart. Um, and the coordination is amazing. So maybe if I can say that in terms of my experience of the Ngirni Lalini Meke, uh, in the case of Andi Vakumbao school, the girls had the opportunity to give the Lali. Um, maybe because it, we were a girls school, but in the picture, but back in the day, if I remember correctly, it was mainly in the villages, the boys or the men. Thank you, Dr. T. Nah. That doesn't help. Um, I'm just, uh, um, William's just asked a question about remapping data. Um, I'll type a response, uh, uh, William, in the in the chat, but basically in our terms and conditions, we're not um, Digital Pacific, uh, cannot edit or alter any of the uh, metadata from a content partner. We believe it's always more important for users, people with knowledge, local knowledge, indigenous knowledge, could to connect directly with the content partner and in this case as Shirlene has pointed out there is um, National Library of Australia does have uh, channels and systems um, to update their metadata so um, because we only ever reflect um, the metadata from a content partner uh, when they update it we will we we regularly what we call reharvest uh, the metadata back uh, and so we will reflect those changes in our site as well it's better to have for us it's better to have it done at the the source who holds the content. So I hope that answers the question. Um, cool, we'll jump on to uh, this next photo. I think this is again, it's a different photographer and a little bit earlier, 1890s um, from uh, Charles H. Carey. Uh, and this is a photo called or labeled as meeting Fijian chiefs, um, which when I was looking at it was uh, fascinating because of the for me, because of the, and again, it's in black and white, but just the, the different face paintings, um, as you zoom in there. So I'll pass to you, Dr. T, if you had any insights or thoughts on this one. Yes, I just uh, remembered if I can just talk a little bit, just very quickly about the Lali. Oh, uh, yeah. And before we go to this picture, um, yes. I was recalling reading, um, I think it was in the 1800s, uh, when it was uh, during um, the arrival of the Christianity and a lot of the missionaries were going up the Rail River uh, all the way up to, you know, Naita Siri up the Wendina River. Uh, one way that uh, a lot of the, the missionaries when they came up there um, and especially the, the European explorers was one of the things they attacked in some of the villages was they wanted, they don't want to have the Lali there for the purposes because the Fijians were communicating through the lali beats. So one village was, uh, was playing the drums and telling the other village that this is this people coming over. And when they come to the village, there's no one there. <laughs> so I just thought I mentioned it, that it was captured that uh, the Europeans that came, they had no idea that the Fijians have their own coded message. So yay to lali. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, faster than uh, 4G. Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, 5G? Oh, 5G, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, no Wi-Fi needed. Okay. No Wi-Fi needed, yeah. 
Uh, here we go. Uh, any thoughts on this one? Yes, I think you can just see here the, uh, I just love the costumes. Um, and again, you know, body adornment uh, is so important, you know, to us, particularly when it comes to uh, meeting of someone of high rank. Um, definitely when there's meeting of chiefs, there would definitely be entertainment or meke, you know, that is performed. Um, and also the people who are dressed um, in this case, you can see that they have the moro um, you can see the black paint, um, usually made of charcoal, mixed with coconut, noiwai, uh, melolo, matandra. But again, to me, uh, what uh, strikes me here is the, uh, the body adornment that they put on themselves. Um, and again, body adornment to Fijians at that time is key because it reflects their rank um, and also the purpose of why they dressed. So if their purpose to perform mameke, then they will dress accordingly. Um, if they are dressed to guard the chief, then they dress accordingly. And they will dress according to their rank or the tribe that they belong to. Um, I like the gentleman on the right hand side with the mbatini uh, the pig's tusk right on his chest. Um, that is something that is uh, unique, I think in Fiji. Uh, nowadays, they. They just put it on, you know, in today's, uh, you know, younger generation, maybe they, they like maybe a necklace and they say, oh, I want to put it on. Or maybe the choreographer might say, you have to look uniform for this particular event. So you all have to wear it. Mm. But back in the day, you wear it because it is your rank, right? Uh, it is, you know, yeah. yeah. So if you are uh, Sauturanga, if you are Matanivanua, so there's that uh, ranking that I'm talking about that uh, is represented. So for anything like that, so it would be someone of, um, you know, a chief or son of a chief uh, who will be uh, ranked accordingly. Um, I have a quick memory of uh, a mecca that we performed at the University of the South Pacific. This was in the 19, 1990s, but this was not to do with men. So I just love this handsome gentleman right here. Uh, but for the women, when we were doing the mecca for the Mburumbasanga Confederacy, the girls that were going to be standing in the middle, they have to wear the necklace that represent their rank and where they come from. So I just want to sh share here that things that we put on our body tells our story. Mm. Yes, uh, very much so. Yep, um, that's very powerful, Dr. T. And and I think it's um, you can see the. I don't know, you can zoom right in, but you can see the strength in these men and, and uh, mm. the, val the val value and honor they put in, in presenting here. I think it's fascinating because right down the back, you can see some people dressed in Western ways <laughs> that are right down the back <laughs> uh, in, in terms of the photo, but yeah, very powerful. Mm. powerful and you can see that the, they're holding the iwau, so it's a meke iwau. So they must mm. have just also either performed a meke or they were part of the entourage to protect the chief. Uh, depending on the uh, the context eh, of when yeah. this uh, picture was was taken, oh, so um, yeah, yeah. Um, just a couple of questions in the chat here. Uh, one from Libby: Are they all chiefs? The, would these men all be chiefs in this photo, or are they? Um, usually, can you tell from the rank or? yeah. Um, like with the one with the uh, the pig's task, you can tell straight away. Because uh, you can tell others, yeah, you can tell the others, some don't. So yeah. that's kind of a, a significant marker that you can look at. So if someone is wearing it, that they would be offered chiefly uh, blood. But by looking at this group, I don't think they all are. Uh, they mm. would be uh, maybe part of a village or a tikina that would have been selected to be part of this uh, actual event. Mm. Yeah, very much so. Thank you. Um, and Suliana has asked the adornment on their heads. What is that called? Is it looks like the headband? I suppose this. Yeah, it also it depends on where they come from. Yeah, so because uh, different places in Fiji have different ways of uh, using headbands or things that they put uh, on their head. Um, I'm not even sure what it is. It looks like either masivulavula if it's a white mm. tapa that is uh, made in such a way for them to put on. And that's again, another 
uh, evidence if someone is of high rank as well, because for those of us in Fiji, uh, when the chief is in, in our midst, we're not allowed to have anything on our hair, mm. uh, on our head, even for both genders. Um, mm. And so, you know, I usually just, like even me, I'm wearing teki teki, <laughs> uh, but when I go to the my koro, I take it out. Yeah, nothing above mm. your shoulder and up. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think it's vow because the vow would be for the skirt, the liku, because the vow, the wild hibiscus fiber, is usually just for the vesa and for the liku. Um, yeah, I have a feeling. I'm just yeah. Don't know if I can focus. And I have a feeling it mm. might be massive olobula because it's very white because the 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 vow is kind of cream color yeah yeah that's just what i'm looking at from here this one looks it's, like it comes into a bit of a, a like train a cape, eh? cape or a train yeah so. yeah so uh, yeah maybe it's another researcher uh, to whoever asked so we'll try and see yeah uh, that's yeah. just my Teresa response <laughs> but uh, we might uh, try and do some more research and see whether it's really whether vow or mass yeah yeah thank you um we don't have much time but was there any so i guess we'll throw to you dr Teresa. is anyone of the images because we looked at some more earlier is there anyone you wanted to talk to in particular and i can quickly try and find it or? yes i like the one with the kurunibiti and the ones with the, the turtles oh, the, the turtle. yao yeah. yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for everybody logging in. This one. And Vinaka to Digital Pacific for hosting this event. <laughs> Thank you. So this was the one. Okay. Um, and again, eight, approximately 1895 uh, at National Library of Australia, uh, piles of food for a Fijian feast. Um, and we, we love our food uh, in, <laughs> in Fiji. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is, I actually, as we were prepping, I'd always, when I, and I've seen this a number of times, I'd always seen the, the talo here, but I'd never mm -hmm. seen these here until we were just yeah. prepping before you joined us and to realize that these are two huge sea turtles. Um, yes. I'm sorry, I don't know the Fijian word for them, but, um, yeah, no, vonu. Mm -hmm. yeah, vonu. and I'm just also looking at what's behind the two vonu. looks like that's, uh, Layangona. Oh, like yes, right yeah, yeah. The, mm, that's huge. Yeah, I can tell yeah. it's seven years old and looks like it's from Kandavu. <laughs> all the, all, you know, it, all the best Yangona comes from <laughs> our island. <laughs> so for those of you listening in, sorry, me and Tim are a little bit biased. Uh, for, um, for your comment, yeah. So yeah, definitely the Vonu um, from my uh, research, you know, even though now today it's uh, part of conservation, you know, to uh, manage, uh, <laughs> uh, to manage the, you know, the use uh, of uh, vonu, the turtle, uh, especially with the conservation laws and, and, and regulations. But back in the day, the, the vonu uh, was always presented this way for chiefly uh, events only. Usually they mm. just bring the vonu for when the paramount chief. So, you know, in Fiji, we all know we have the, the little chiefs and you have the paramount chiefs. So I'm talking about the, the, the liu liu ni vi matin tu, the the paramount chiefs. Mm. That's when you start to see the vonu uh, being brought in. And uh, it's not all the time. It's only specifically uh, for that particular purpose. But if I can just say about the vonu, I remembered if I can go back to my example in Lao, when I was in uh, Kambara, we went to the island of Wongava. So Wongava Island is just off uh, Kambara. And there's a big lake, huge lake. When you're standing on the, on the, um, beside the lake and you look across, you think you're already in the outer ocean, but you're still mm. in the lake inside this island. Wow. But inside this lake, now Tombu Nivon. And apparently I found out from the people in uh, Kambara, in the Kelean, that uh, the Tuneau, the Lake Tuneau, uh, when he visits uh, Lakemba, he makes a detour to Kambara. And as soon as the people of Kambara knows that uh, Turangana Tuneau is, is visiting or is arriving, there's mm -hmm. a team that goes over to um, uh, Wangaba to harvest uh, one or two bonu for him. So na kena dan ba ba la ba bit na bi ba men men ni eh er do da kabanga ra ba ro takan na bonu 
ena bukun renga na turanga e chuka ngawi renga ra wakarutaka na kena taka na mangiti na reka kiri kiri boy rochi renga wakam bimbi na bia na turanga iyo and so uh yeah the vonu is only used for that part also yeah i've eaten the i've eaten the the vonu the the meat is really tasty depending on how it's uh, you know it's used uh dinu sarandi samanunu um and also if i can say too about the vonu uh, it's also included in our wili wili bakabit our traditional counting uh na vonu maybe i should ask the audience who knows the wili wili bakabit my naita from uh, Teilewo. Who knows the will will work a bit the traditional counting? If you can type your answer on the chat. Yeah, anyone in the Zoom or Facebook? <laughs> oh, it's Meli. Meli Tugata. Okay. Thank you for the confession. <laughs> Okay, if I can say whoever answers it first and it's correct, I'll send you a gift. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Melly's Melly's googling right now. <laughs> I might send you some kandavu kava straight from kandavu. Vina ka vina ka vina ka vale vuna se amatiko mai ya na bonu na will will bakabiti the traditional counting has to do with the bonu. <clears throat> Okay, all right. There's some answers coming in. Vinaka, Vinaka, Shabel, Bulanita. So, coming back to the Vonu, um, in some of the islands in Fiji, uh, they have the. So, the answer is there, eh, yeah, Shabel? So, Tinina and Radule as well, eh, Turanganita, William? So, Tinina Vonu, Sandonan B. The B is the name of the pond where they have 10 Vonu looked after in this particular pond. That's what it's called. Um, and I remembered if I can give another example, I went to the island of Nangelilevu uh, to the northwest of Tabiuni, and it's to the southeast of Vikombia. It's a beautiful island, and we went there. And um, now the people of Nangelilevu, they're now living in Weirik, uh, in uh, uh, on the island of Tabiuni. That's where they are now. But when we came to Nangelilevu, there was only a couple, old couple, they are both in the 80s uh, staying on the island. But we found a couple of Tombu, the Tombu ni, ni Vonu. Yes, and there were Vonu still there. So if there's anybody from Taviuni here or from Nangelilevu, please make an effort to go over to Nangelilevu. They still have the ponds and the Vonus are still in there. And the Vonu even had the algae, you know, na lumi lumi na tapunre is a really binaka, and they're still there. And I really want to do some more research to find out the roles of the people of uh, Nangelilevu. Maybe that was where a lot of the Vonu were looked after for the Turanga na Um That's kind of my hypothesis. And the Sabinunu and the others were from uh, the Aunrovi. Uh, maybe you can add some information to this uh, research I'm doing. Uh, I just love picturing that image in my head on the island of Nangelilevu, where there's these huge ponds, which is called Mbi, eh? um, in Fijian. And also with the Mangiti, this is like a food presentation. If I can answer the question on the, on the food, this is a presentation of a certain ceremony. And of course, for Fiji, we have so many um, types of ceremonies. I noted it down here, if I can share them, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have so many Mangiti. Uh, Mangiti is the word that is applied when there's a, a large collection of food that is being brought together for mm -hmm. traditional presentation, and then it's divided up again. That is a, a beauty about Fiji. We have this cultural exchange system, which is has its monetary value. See? Mm -hmm. So I always say, Tim, that sometimes people say, oh, you know, we were illiterate. We don't know how to count. We don't know. They sing. Right, mm -hmm. we were mathematicians, we were astronomers, we were botanists, you know, we were food scientists of our own right. Yes, okay, so I'm mm -hmm. going to give a lecture there if I can go back to the list of the Mangiti. Uh, so some of the Mangitis that I have here, some of the people in the audience will know the Murua, Vakatari Sulu, Vakamamava, and there's also the Solevu. The word Solevu uh, is a word for you know, gathering together for celebration. And also there's different types of mangiti. 
this we call the Mangiti Nimbili Nimua, which is the present full presentation that is given for the visitors that are departing. And there's also food presentation that is called the Mangiti Nimua if we give it to visitors who are just arriving. Yeah? I just mm -hmm. love the use of the words, you know, the Nobosa Wakabiti, because it's got the, the meaning in it. So please, let's not forget our language because the language has the content and the knowledge inside it. So the Mangiti in summary, uh, we've got uh, uh, the Mangiti that is presented for visiting of a high chief, Solevu, the launching of a new canoe, the launching or the unveiling of a new house, na vimbulu, funerals, birth, which we call the tununra, vakamau, marriage, and also the one last one I'm gonna share is the mangiti niyavui. Yeah, there's what is called the mangiti niyavui, which is the a celebration that is given for uh, young men uh, when they reach manhood. Yeah, so it's part of the initiation rites. So yeah, it's really, really awesome to go back uh, down memory lane, Tim Bilak. Well, thank, thank you so much, uh, Dr. T. Um, that has been, uh, yeah, quite inspiring. It's always fantastic to watch uh, you because of all of your enthusiasm and passion and, and, and the deep knowledge and the rich heritage. And I just want to uh, totoko what you said there about holding to the language, holding to Vasavokoviti. Uh, and and the heritage that it has and also that that beautiful piece there you know we were mathematicians we were food scientists we were botanists we were astronomers um uh in in our own rights and i think the the language is the is the piece that helps us connect to that um and that's a wonderful way to finish so thank you so much um and thank you for all of the rich stories you brought around again just very what we often see in terms of how we um access these uh, photos and images which are very static and and your the richness of what you brought to us is um very much um very valued and very powerful um thank you also to uh dr sherlene for joining us and for sharing your project um at national library of australia uh and for all of the uh, the work that you do in, in the National Library to preserve, um, is it 50,000 hours of oral? 55,000, yep, sorry, I'm lip reading there. because you... <laughs> Yeah, muted, sorry. <laughs> but no, a real privilege and uh, just the most enjoyable honour to, to listen to um, Dr. T and, and to share um, the meaning of, of all the, the material. So um, thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this will obviously be um, stay on the Facebook Live if you want to go back and rewatch it. Um, and a big plug for uh, Dr. T's uh, Talanoa with Dr. T YouTube and Facebook Live session. Uh, still in awe of how she does so much uh, in as well as uh, all of her work at the University of Hawaii Hilo. Um, but please check if you're more interested in, in any of the aspects of Fijian culture and heritage, please. Um, uh, follow her on YouTube. Uh, I should uh, make, sure, no make like, sure you subscribe. That's the one. Sorry, we're not in YouTube. So I've forgotten the banter. Subscribe, like, click the bell. That's subscribe. The one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we will edit this and put it on our Digital Pacific YouTube channel. Um, but follow Dr. Teresi's. Hers is much better than ours. Uh, thank you so much to everyone. Uh, have a wonderful evening, afternoon. Uh, Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the week. Vinaka everyone, take care. More the